All right. I have been asked by President Locker to provide you with an update of school safety measures in light of the recent events at New Rochelle High School. As you may know, in the past few weeks, New Rochelle High School has received threatening calls which twice resulted in the safe evacuation of students and staff. I want to assert that each school has an emergency response plan which has been reviewed by both the police and fire departments as well as the District Safety Committee. These plans outline a, outline a wide variety of safety protocols that have been customized to meet the needs of each specific school building. <coughs> this afternoon, the high school administration, central administration, the director of security, the district safety administrator, board president Locker, vice president Merchant, met with Commissioner Carroll and members of the Nourishelle Police Department to review and discuss recent events at the high school and to establish additional safety protocols. In addition, after consulting with the Nourishelle Police Department and working directly with our phone service provider, the district has already enacted a two-tiered approach to thwart future threatening calls and to trace the callers who place them. With colder months approaching, the district has also begun a review of a step-by-step -step process of evacuating schools to ensure students, faculty, and staff are outside for as short a period of time as possible. This review focuses our attention on a multitude of weather conditions including temperature, wind, chill, rain, snow, sleet, and other critical variables including the time needed and other emergency responders to conduct thorough evaluations and keep our communities safe. While safety protocols will not be shared with the public, these procedures will be reviewed by the District Safety Committee, which includes representatives from the police and fire departments and are available for the Board of Education. Joining me tonight is Ellen Garcia, School District Safety Administrator and Dignity Act Compliance Officer, who will speak briefly about the safety measures conducted throughout the district since the beginning of this school year. This year, each school has updated their school building level emergency response plan and begun the process of conducting the mandated safety drills outlined in the district safety plan. These drills include 12 fire drills, three lockdown drills, one lockout drill, the annual early dismissal drill, and an evacuation drill. This year, the district safety team established the focus of the early dismissal drill held on October 4th. The elementary and middle schools practiced a shelter in place drill for severe weather with a scenario of, high, of severe winds and the New Rochelle High School and Campus School held preliminary evacuation drills. The representatives of the police department and fire department have attended safety meetings and observed safety drills this fall. Since September, New Rochelle High School has limited the number of points of entry to the school after 8.30 in the morning and they've um, decreased that to two entry points. Additional safety equipment has been ordered and received, including radios, shades for interior doors, and exterior window shades for the first floor in all of the elementary schools. In regard to the Dignity for All Students Act, an update was provided for the Dignity Act coordinators in September. Training was provided to the New Rochelle High School administrators in October, and multiple Update presentations were provided on Superintendent's Conference Day on November 5th, 2013. Tomorrow I will provide a specific Dignity for All training update for the New Rochelle High School um, teaching assistants and um, aides at New Rochelle High School, the special ed staff. Thank you very much. At this point, if the board has any questions or comments, we certainly would like to hear them and certainly try to respond. I have two. Um, 
One is, uh, at least with these two instances at high school, it's from what I've heard from the community. I haven't really heard too many complaints, which is good. The only thing that I would recommend is, uh, it seems in both incidents, incidents uh, the communication to the parents was about two hours after the, it happened. Uh, so I think we need to take a look at how we can do that a lot sooner for the parents. Uh, that's the first thing. The second thing is that I think I would like to post at some point that maybe the board gets a little snippet of the dignity uh, uh, training for us because I'm kind of curious what it looks like. So you know, a nice free snippet for us I think would be great. Um, I, I just wanted to comment. Um, as a member of the board, I just have to say how refreshing it is to have heard that there was this meeting today. Um, we've come so far, I think, over the past year in um, lessons learned and moving forward in our approach to safety. And as I said at the beginning, I just think that this is fantastic and it, it really um, makes me feel proud that, that we're moving forward in this way. I, I just uh, will um, just add one thing in terms of the, the timing. Um, I think uh, uh, last week in the first event, um, which happened during the day, um, uh, we were, I, I think we have a certain uh, intent to be cautious. Uh, we want to put things up quickly, but we want to put things up accurately. Um, I, think, uh, I, I think the shared uh, view is that it's worse to put up wrong information or to uh, contribute to rumors because the rumors have a life of their own without our uh, assisting them. Uh, and so um, I, I think that in general the practice has been, from my understanding, and I think correctly so, uh, to uh, if it takes a few more minutes to make sure that we get the right information. Uh, as we know, our statements have to be written. I mean, there is a certain technical aspect, they have to be written, we translate them so they're available in Spanish, uh, and then they have to be put up, and they are put up in all of our media sources now. I mean, I don't think anyone can complain now that uh, we don't get the word out. I mean, it's a fair point whether it could be done a few minutes sooner. Yeah, well, I mean, but this, I'm talking two hours, so I'm not talking I, about a few I don't minutes. think it was two hours, actually, yeah, I, as, I, a, as, a, as a person who was sort of, I, I just think that you, you have to understand what's going on first and assess. Uh, and, and so to get a call out in, you know, all that much faster once you, before you know what's going on, I think, it's, it's, I think they did a fairly good job in terms of getting the information out to the parents, as a parent, I think. Uh, my, I, you know, if it could get done any faster, fine. But I, I think as, and I hated to interrupt, but I, uh, but I think as David was saying, you know, you've got to assess the situation first and, and then get the message out, and I, 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 you know, I think it was done in a reasonable enough time. I don't think it was two hours. But I just uh, wanted to mention the technical aspects of it. I mean, there is the statement, whatever it is, has to be written by someone, and, and we don't have to send them to council. We have plenty of talent uh, right within the district um, in this room. Uh, so we get, but we want the statement to be accurate. We want it to be complete without being too much or too little, uh, and we don't want to have to go back and issue a correction or or an update because of insufficient information. Sometimes you need an update. But you want it to be uh, correct, and then it's just the pure technical aspect. It needs to be written, needs to be translated. Uh, then we do have the uh, uh, facilities. Dr. Coleman and her staff uh, on the district website, on the Facebook page, on the Twitter feed, the robocalls. Uh, I mean, this is a whole new level of communication that we have never had in this district before uh, this year. And unfortunately, it's been uh, uh, too frequently tested uh, in these kinds of situations. So, you know, we're going to continue to refine it. I think we'll always do that. I mean, there's certainly no intention to uh, take any longer than is necessary. Uh, but I just, uh, uh, I, I, for one, am appreciative of the effort that was done, and, uh, and so far we haven't had to retract anything, we haven't had to correct anything, and I think, uh, you know, I, I'd rather do it that way, and we really haven't heard a lot of complaints from parents. We have a few people at this table who have students. Right, can, I, can I finish sure. my comment? Can I sure. Earlier? Thank sure. you. 
so first of all, it wasn't a criticism, it was just a statement. Um, right. And but but again, I do think that we need to do it a lot quicker. And it was two hours from the, the sources of the people that I talked to. Um, so it's just to me, it's a matter. I understand what you're saying about being cautious, but you you want to make sure you don't have rumors. But with the fact that people are rolling around outside the building, rumors are starting anyway. So as much as we can get something out as quickly as possible, I think is important. I'd rather have something out for people to think about and then retract later on than waiting a couple hours and have having information sent out. So my viewpoint, the more and the quick the quicker you get something out, uh, the better. You know, from my understanding, talking to a couple of parents that, you know, the kids in this past week that were on the front side, on the Pro Street side, had no idea what, were, what was going on. The folks that happened to be by the tennis court, the security guards, they were telling them what was going on. So kids were outside for an hour and a half not really knowing. But of course, again, rumors start spreading, text messages, what have you. So again, I think it's just important that we get our information out as quickly as possible with the understanding that the, obviously more information needs to, be, needs to follow. But uh, having people mulling around or parents not wondering, wondering what's going on, um, I think would be better, beneficial for the parents. Okay, that's fair. Uh, yes, Chris. I just have one question or comment. I'm sure, I don't know if this was kind of handled or whatever. I know all the police are investigating the, the call itself. I don't want to discuss safety or kind of anything. Um, making sure our students, while we don't know if it was a student or a community member or anything, making sure that students need to be made aware that this is a criminal offense. So if they're doing a prank or think it's fun or anything, that we relay a message to our students that if they're doing this for fun or anything, that they know that it's a criminal offense and that it's not a joke, it's not a game, while it may be fun, that they realize the seriousness behind it and getting that message out um, while we're doing the investigation because you know, they may not realize that, and it is it isn't a criminal offense. And they really need to realize that our students, if it's not them, just to make sure that they never even think. It's a teachable moment, as sad as it is, it's still a teachable moment, and maybe we should kind of make sure that the message gets out there, so that they don't ever think of doing something like this. Okay. okay, anybody else? I think we're done with this for today. Okay, thank you. Uh, my name is Robert Cox. I live at 173 Mount Joy Place in New Rochelle. Um, so, uh, thank you for the uh, safety update to Ms. Massimo and to Ms. Garcia. Um, I had a few thoughts about that. Um, both the uh, event on November 20th um, at the high school when it was evacuated and also, and also the event that took place on Monday. Um, some folks may recall that I've uh, also been present at, at uh, all the other evacuations this year at the high school. I think there's now been four. Um, and uh, I uh, wrote on my website, um, and I will say here now that uh, things have improved markedly. Um, I especially thought that uh, I, I he left, but um, Principal Richardson and the whole team seemed very much in command, especially on November 20th. Um, um, in contrast to the previous evacuations back in the spring, um, it seemed everything was done in a very decisive manner. Um, the students seemed to know what they were supposed to do, as did the staff and security in particular, um, and just everything was... Uh, just far more orderly um, and, and better all around. Obviously, I couldn't see what was happening on inside. Uh, people may have been screaming and pulling their hair out inside, but from the outside looking in, um, you know, I thought things were, um, you know, just a lot better. Um, so I had a couple of thoughts, and I'll make some comments about what was said here. One is, um, you know, as I went over to the scene. Uh, especially on the 20th, and this also occurred back in January, um, there was a bunch of kids that were walking away from the school because they had been dismissed uh, that were wearing their gym uniforms. And uh, there was also, I, I'm told, a bunch of kids that were um, either in the pool or had just gotten out of the pool. And uh, it was very cold. I think it was in the, maybe in the high 20s. It was extremely cold. And uh, you know, I felt bad for uh, these kids. So I had this uh, thought 
that uh, maybe what the district could do is come up with some sort of emergency blanket situation or other kind of cover for these students that um, somewhere nearby to the gym and the pool um, there would be something that could be broken out in the event of emergency and rapidly distributed um, so that these kids could, uh, you know, <laughs> survive the evacuation and not die of pneumonia. Um, so that was just one um, that uh, that came up. Um, as far as the communications generally, I mean, uh, it's an old subject, but might as well bring it up now. Um, you know, the New Rochelle phone system is uh, bloody awful. Uh, I think anybody who works for the school district and, and deals with the phones knows that. Um, you know, maybe you can find some basis to get grant funding on, on the emergency safety aspect of having a, a, a current phone system. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I don't know how far out of date our phone systems are here in New Rochelle, but they're significantly out of date. And uh, you know, maybe it's the time to think about uh, fixing that. Um, but on, as far as the communication um, and some of the discussion that took place, um, it, it was a little bit humorous to me because being on site for all of these things, the one thing you can see right away is that every kid pretty much has their phone out. And the idea that their parents aren't being informed, sorry, Jeffrey, unofficially, unofficially, is, is, is not the case because the information is going out very, very rapidly. Um, it may not be going out in a very controlled manner. And that made me think of another idea, which is, um, are the kids themselves being signed up for the alert services? Because, quite frankly, they're much more likely than their parents to be getting text messages or following your Twitter feed or things like that. Um, so I don't know what's possible, Dr. Coleman, but um, I would think that all these kids should be getting on those systems as well. Um, that way they can actually forwarding around correct information. Um, as far as it um, taking a couple of hours, I mean, um, you know, yeah, there was, there was some time left, but let me just tell you, um, people like myself who, who follow this, I mean, I knew within a minutes that there had been a, a, a threat and, and so forth, because it goes out on the police scanner. Uh, it's publicly available information. So, you know, I do think that, um, you know, even though you may not want to give out a full legal statement, um, I think you can do give out what the police are getting, you know, relatively quickly. And you have technology to do that. Thank you. Thank you. And now, uh, thank you for the suggestions. I see some. It's not in uh, in the room, so. Uh. Hey, can, I, can I just say that um, yeah, I, I talked to Principal Richardson at the pancake breakfast, and he had some really great ideas. And one of the ones he mentioned was what you talked about was having something at the pool because he really felt bad about those kids. So yeah, I think he's yeah, right, exactly. We all find that. Yeah, so yeah. Yeah. Dean, uh, Dean uh, Rachel, and I were part of that conversation. So. Yeah, and to your point, he's done a. I think he's done a fantastic job. He handled both situations extremely well. So, and from that, he's really had some great ideas that we're really starting to work on. So, that's what and I, and I think that, that that's, that. that's right. And also, I think from the report that we heard tonight, um, there's some additional focus being given to, again, the circumstances under which the students would have to be outside and how long and and whether there are ways to shorten that time, even short of uh, full admission back into the building. I mean, those are plans under development. So are, we're really kind of going at this in a, several different ways. So um, it's all uh, positive. So uh, thank you for the suggestions and uh, thank you for the comments. Um,